Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for being here, um, to the organizer for inviting me. Uh, I am uh, a, P a postdoctoral researcher working at the Max Planck Institute for Innovation and Competition in Munich. Actually, I've been working there for two weeks now, so <laughs> it's a very new experience. Uh, I used to work, I, I worked before uh, at the University of Trento, where also I uh, did my PhD. Uh, and in fact, all the colleagues that uh, have been involved in writing, in writing this paper are from the University of Trento, apart from Thomas Bargoni, who is in, uh, in the UK. And probably uh, some of you know Thomas because he's uh, much more uh, uh, involved in this uh, project. Uh, the, uh, this is the um, the first page of our paper, which is published in open access uh, through ch several channels, uh, including our uh, repositories, at our repository at the University of Trento. And you will find a link below and also at the end of the presentation. So open science, uh, we start just with this uh, famous picture, um, which reminds us a very uh, famous uh, film, An Unfinished Revolution. Why? Um, first of all, uh, when we speak about uh, when we speak about open science, we refer to the general implementation of the open access principle to. Uh, not only to publication, but any uh, outputs of science, including data. Um, while we speak about an unfinished, we use this word unfinished revolution because of two reasons, actually. One of them is that uh, we are still far from uh, reaching uh, a real uh, open access world in the science, scientific field. So the process is still going on. So uh, several articles are not yet published in open access. This is a first perspective. A second perspective or reason why we talk about uh, uh, this unfinished revolution is the fact that uh, we actually don't see uh, at the legal uh, in the legal field or uh, probably generally is not uh, very clear what is the real goal of open access or maybe the real function on what is the real nature of open access. I refer to the previous speech um, of um, uh, of Fiona, uh, and she said that uh, open access is not only about access, it's not only about access, it's much more. It's about unchaining uh, science uh, from every kind of control. Uh, so uh, it's not only access. We should care about uh, who provides access to content. So I will anticipate actually my conclusion, but this, this overall vision is actually uh, lack, it's, uh, lacked at the moment. So I mentioned, about, I mentioned data. I just uh, would like to remind you that this is the battlefield at this moment because um, we have, just to give you some numbers, we have uh, 60 million academic articles around. So the problem is how to uh, find knowledge. So the information retrieval is the, um, the, 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 the real, uh, I would say, the, the, the real problem, the real uh, um, the real uh, effort we have to make to go in the direction of open access. Uh, let's go on. So I will give you in the first part, so a few minutes, uh, just to, to mention some fundamental rights. Then we will, I will have a look to the legislative, legislative policies uh, which are put are in place now uh, at the European level, and then uh, some conclusion about the, uh, the what is going on now. 
So what's uh, so open access is about uh, participation, so not only access. And this is compliant with this, uh, with international uh, um, agreements uh, and the declaration of fundamental rights. Just to mention one of the, some of the most important, Article 15 of the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Life, the Article 26 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And it's important to, I would like just to read the Article 26 because it's, I think it's, it's, it's very um, meaningful. So it says the right freely to participate in the cultural life of the community, to enjoy the arts and to share in scientific advancement and its benefits. So this, is, this article regards cultural life and so culture and science is part of the culture. That's why there is the connection between science and society from one perspective. And another point that I would like to um, strand to highlight is to, uh, the legislator in this case, the international legislator used the word participate in the cultural light not only access. So the ref uh, participation reminds me to pluralism. So uh, pluralism of what? Source of information, not only one, uh, I would say, platform, or not only few publishers, but many sources of information, many methods of sharing knowledge, and we had uh, a test, uh, we, we had the opportunity to speak about this point in these few days, and this means plurality of contents. So, uh, this participation, this pluralism, is it the core, is the basement, I would say, of open access? And freedom of choice, of course, freedom of choice where I, have, I can inform myself, and etc. What are the enemies uh, that hinder open science and open, the open access uh, uh, itself. Uh, well, I just list a few of them, but they are very, um, I mean, everyone knows about them, uh, but just to remind us what are the problems to go over the problems itself. So one of the problems is, of course, the uh, Decreasing of public funding and, and as a consequence, I, was, I will use this word, the commodification of science. So the idea that uh, science, sci the scientists have to be productive. So uh, like a corporate logic within the university. Uh, itself, science should be a, a collaborative uh, uh, work and in fact, Hope, very hope what's happened is that we are pushed, are researcher, I am a researcher too, but I am pushed to, to, be, the, to be the first to publish in this field, to be uh, the best uh, uh, in order to publish in the best journals, and etc. Uh, I have to have a number of articles, uh, maybe sometimes I have, okay, quality is also a good point, but maybe we just have to care of quantity, etc. Just to make, uh, give you an example, some departments are evaluated, I mean the quality of the department are evaluated on the number of patents uh, and we, uh, we know that it's not just the number of patents that is good for the science uh, uh, or the scientific um, evolution, scientific development. That's why we talk about commodification of science. So that's it, a cultural, uh, also a cultural uh, uh, matter. And of course, uh, what hinder, well, it's a problem for the development of open access is the misleading IP rules, uh, namely in the field of publishing and data, uh, we'll, I would like to refer to COP copyright and sui generis right, which regards uh, data databases. And uh, I don't want to go into, uh, into the, uh, the legislature because it's 
does not make sense. Just would like to tell you that, uh, unfortunately, we have not at international, at European, and also at national level, uh, a special special rules for science. Uh, scientific outputs are uh, treated like music, like uh, films, like uh, books uh, that are readable for everyone. I mean, it's not this, the aim of a filmmaker, it's not the same aim of a scientist. So uh, the problem is that uh, IP rules do not address this topic. Okay, we have just few exceptions in the European legal framework, but these exceptions are not good enough or are not broad enough to allow certain uses. Test and data mining, for example, is at the moment, I mean, is uh, copyright and three generous rights on database, they uh, hinder the text and data mining because theoretically I cannot make a copy and I cannot extract part of an article, etc., to mine, to, to do the test and data mining. And this is, of course, a problem that can, that, that do not uh, allow to improve the open access and open science. And then we have, uh, it's connected to the first point, the, pers the, the, the perverse incentives for, uh, for, um, uh, for scientists, uh, they are, uh, as I have remembered before, they, uh, they, uh, they need to publish in high impact factor journal, etc. That's why we have, uh, so Dr. Jack and Mr. Hyde, uh, scientists that on one side is a scientist that is going to, is, he would like to, to to do his job, to, to I would say, to go uh, in the direction of truth. And on the other side, we have the part that is like the, in the context uh, uh, is, has to be like that, has to be, he's like that. It has not to, have to be. Then, okay, and one of the main obstacles to the open access, in our view, is the lack of a current, coherent, and a, la a clear vision. So what is, as mentioned before, what is the goal of open access? Access to scientific knowledge itself, without considering who grants access and use of it, or rather, knowledge dissemination free for any form of culture, control, economical or intellectual? Well, we have uh, uh, this um, lack of clear vision uh, reflects on the legislator, uh, reflect on the, legisl reflect the legislator. The German paradigm, for example, uh, as you know, the, 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 German, the German Copyright Act was uh, uh, amended a few years ago, three years ago actually, a little bit less than three years ago. And uh, okay, the, the German legislator, um, my, in my opinion, uh, did a good job because uh, he tried to solve the problem, uh, the legal problem uh, for open access, which is the copyright. Uh, uh, as you know, very often what happened is that the researcher uh, assign its right, so he transfer its right to the publish, and then he cannot anymore publish, uh, republish the work, the work in open access. This is the, the legal, so the main legal problem. So to uh, to go over this problem, the German uh, legislator uh, introduced introduce a, a section in the. Article uh, uh, 38 uh, and uh, give uh, uh, that gives to the um, to the author the right uh, to make the works publicly available for non-commercial purposes uh, 12 months after the publications. This uh, right is not, uh, I would say, viable 
the, so the author cannot renounce, cannot, renounce uh, cannot waive of these rights. It's a mandatory provision. The only pro, I mean the only one of the problems that I see in this uh, in this um, in this rule is the fact that it's the republication is only for non-commercial purposes. Uh, this is not totally compliant with the vision of open access that we are uh, talking about. Why? Because, for example, just to give you an example, our science is not only made for non-profit purposes, uh, or, uh, I mean, the idea of non-commercial purposes, uh, it's a bit tricky, I mean, to interpret how you define what is a commercial purpose and what is not. So it's a bit problematic. The Italian job, which is also another f very uh, famous field, uh, the Italian job, uh, it's uh, not so, I mean, the, the Italian legislator did not touch the copyright um, rules at all. He just uh, issued a pro programma I would say a programmatic rule uh, requiring the university and public institution to adopt uh, policies. But uh, uh, the, 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 the law is, uh, honestly, it's not very effective because just to give you some number, in Italy uh, we have at the moment, and the, the law has three years almost, uh, and we have only um, 15 universities adopted uh, now a policy. Um, some of them do not have policies, but have the, um, the uh, institutional repositories, but still they not have the policy. And the policy, it's, uh, in our view, it's a, it's a necessary tool in this framework, because it's the only way to uh, put in place incentives for the, in order to, in some, to some extent, to make authors uh, to deposit, depositing uh, works in, in the repositories. Um, then, just to give you, to, to go back to our uh, uh, first concept, so the idea that open access is not just uh, um, giving access, um, there is this, uh, there is an article published on the, um, on the University of California website that uh, makes some interesting, uh, points out some interesting differences among uh, open access repository and academia.edu, for example, or ResearchGate, which are interpreted by the researcher. By the way, they are interpreted as open access, but in truth, this is not real open access because these are uh, private entities like Social Science Research Network, for example, which is different, uh, a different platform. But as you know, recently, for example, it was this uh, Social Science Research Network uh, transfer, I mean, uh, uh, sell, sold uh, itself to, to Elsevier. And Elsevier was interested in Social Science Research Network uh, likely not because of the article itself, but because of the data that Social Science Research Network collected until now. So, uh, it's not, um, it's, it's, I mean, uh, we are not against, of course, the private entities, so Academia.wide, Redgate, etc., but it's not open access because they collect the data and they own the, da the data that are connected with the content. What happened at a European level? Uh, we have to, to, to recognize that the policy of the European Union are uh, going in the right direction, I would say, because uh, as a, a, pu as a um, public funder, uh, the European Union required um, the researcher to put uh, uh, works and data in open access. Uh, but this is a strange, I mean, what is strange is that the European legislation, legislator uh, tried to, um, to use an indirect means, I would say, to foster open access, because 
actually the legislator uh, does not touch the, the, what is the real uh, problem, I mean copyright, the copyright in this field or the uh, sui generis uh, um, protection of databases, but just try to uh, delegate to contract actually, because this is the point, because what happens is that the European Union is uh, fund, um, fund research, funds the research, and uh, requires the university um, to put the result in open access. But what the university has to do is to use the contracts, okay, uh, use the contract to, uh, to preserve I mean, the right in order to, uh, com to be compliant with the requirement of the European Union as a public funder. Uh, but at the same time, probably because of the lobbying, uh, the European Union is not doing anything and actually is going in the uh, opposite side because, for example, I don't know if you know, uh, it's. Uh, mm, there is a public consultation right now uh, about introducing a related right or ancillary, ancillary right, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, for publishers. So, in the idea of the, I mean, the, the European Commission is collecting uh, opinion uh, because publishers are are uh, requiring to have a proper let's say, not copyright, but like a related right. So that means that uh, this is going exactly in the opposite side, right? Okay, just to conclude, uh, what we need, it's okay, have a vision, have a goal, what is open access, and in order to go in this precise historical moment because of this legislation, etc., we are, uh, of course, we are looking forward to a proper legislator, but we, you can work with the institutional policies, which are also very important, and of course, contracts, and I, I would like to mention the Creative Commons Public License version 4 because uh, contract is, is the, the way to allow the user to, make, to use the work actually uh, in different uh, ways and different. Just to give you a glimmer of hope, what time is it? Uh, the, uh, uh, we are uh, the, the European legislator um, uh, is thinking about introducing a text and data mining uh, uh, exception. Uh, I don't want to go um, in, into details. If you would like to know something about, we can talk about later, but this is maybe a positive uh, hope. Uh, and that's what I wanted to tell you. Thank you for your attention and if you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Great, thank you. Thanks for uh, sticking to the time. Much appreciated. So we do have time for maybe one or two short questions. Yes. Young lady. Uh, thank you for this. I. It's not really a question. I really want to support you in saying that what we really need is uh, better copyright rules here uh, in Europe and that the reform that is uh, happening now at the level of the European Commission, uh, at the level of uh, Europe, is very, very important to follow. And I would like to call upon everyone here to uh, lobby in their countries with their MEPs and whatever to really follow up and make sure that, not make sure, try <laughs> to convince them of the importance uh, for science. That's, uh, it's not a question, but uh, something Yes, thank really you. Is. No, no, I fully agree. You should really take care of, because otherwise someone else take care of copyright law. <laughs> <laughs>